and are still speaking to men. Ancestors, again, just like the ancient aliens, did exist. But these ones, we know that they were physical because they are your bloodlines. They are men's bloodlines. These are people that came before us. Now, 18 again, gateway. So they're gatekeepers. They are gatekeepers to the earth, which means just as your parents are gatekeepers to you, if they did not come, you would not exist. If they did not come, you would not exist. It's like this dog barks at the rhythm. <laughs> if they did not come, you would not exist. So we have ancestors. Whether they were with God or without God, that is irrelevant. They are our bloodline. They birthed us. And to a large extent, they are gatekeepers, bunny. Oh, Easter's coming up. They are gatekeepers. And many of them are also, just as the ancient aliens or ancient spirits, keepers of certain knowledge of God because they came to the earth first so they would have known God directly or would have had more information about God than we did because they were the first, just as Adam was the first. Now, Perebe, this is a harder word to minister on. Maybe that's why it's so heavy here. Because they flowed in whatever direction they flowed in, and I'm seeing waters when I speak about this word, some of them departed from just as when Adam was removed from the garden. His children went further and further away from the state of the place where God dwells until the time of Abraham, because we understood that Abraham was one who was looking for a city built by God, which would have been similar in instance to where Adam came from. But obviously by that time things had developed. So instead of him looking for a gardener, he was looking for a city because the world had developed at the time. It wasn't no longer a garden. Even us now, we're not looking for the garden of Eden anymore. We're looking for a city. Because the garden is a sanctuary. It is a place where everything is... It is almost like a nursery, if you will, where God is teaching us certain things. But from the garden, we move to the cities because even heaven itself is a city. Heaven itself is a city. So we understand that the garden are depicted, in my mind, to be a place of refuge and a nursery. But as you grow in spirit and you, as you advance in spirit and as you, your kingship grows and as your knowledge of God grows and so on and so forth as you ad advance as a spirit, then you are, this is a shaky bridge. If you can even call it a bridge, oh, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> so you move from that state, from your sanctuary to the place of rulership. Now, we also understand that because when God created Adam, he said, subdue the earth and multiply. Subdue the earth and multiply. Which means that there were spirits on this earth that were supposed to be subdued. Subdued means to overpower or rule over. Now, those are not just the animals. We understand that he was already, already given authority over animals, over the beasts, over the fowls in the air. But there were spirits on this earth which he was commanded as men, including us, to subdue. Meaning that at some point or another, they had to come out of Eden, out of the garden, onto the earth, multiply, cover it fully, and subdue it, which is what Jesus also did, by the way, when he, he, when he gave his command. He said, go ye into the world, to the, all the ends of the earth. He said, the ends of the earth. Obviously, now we go with the new word, which is the gospel. But if you actually understand the elements of the gospel, it is to subdue. It is to make disciples of men, but it is also to subdue the spirits around men. The demons, the spirits and what, what, what. You know, God says you do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but powers and spirits in heavenly places. These are, these are spirits which are powerful. 
But again, you have the power to subdue them. And you can only do that with God's spirit in you. The waters are flowing here. Another makeshift bridge. <laughs> That's man. So now I'm crossing over again. So you're supposed to subdue it. And even when the children of Egypt, the Egyptians by that point, but when the, the Hebrew people came out of Egypt with Moses, the promised land that God wanted to take them to, again, it is a land that God has promised you. They had to fight for it. They had to go and subdue the people that were there so that they can take over. So do not put away the spirit inside of you that is there to subdue and to have power over. You don't have power over other men. That is not what God designed you for because all men are supposed to have God's spirit in them. We subdue the earth, we subdue the demons, we subdue the spirits, even though I know the Bible says submit to God and the devil will flee. That is a great word, but there's also times and places where you need to put him under your feet. Put him under your feet. I'm hearing the word on resurrection now. The word resurrection, when you, because the devil and the spirit of death itself rules over men in power, in sin, and in death, in power, in, in sin, these are not doctrines by the way, you'll find the scriptures on your own, in power, in sin, and in death, that is how the spirits rule over us. We give over to our lusts and our flesh manifests because we understand and we know that the flesh is admitted to God. God is spirit and we worship him as the Lord says, we worship him in spirit and in truth. So the perversion of the earth and the spirits around us, they gravitate us and navigate us towards our flesh, towards our lust, and we understand that that is not where God is. So when you rise up in the spirit, again, in so doing, you're subduing the spirit of death, the spirit of sin, which is what resurrection is. When you're resurrected in the spirit, death no longer has hold over you, nor does sin, because Jesus conquered both sin and death. And so you also are supposed to conquer both sin and death have mastered and have power over it. When you have power over yourself, in that sense, you have the power over the devil, you have the power over death, and all things earthly. I feel like I'm changing into something as I'm moving. Kera bra anglo zigora bredia. We will see. I don't know if I'll get to the top or not, but we will see. But anyway, um, I don't know what I said in this video because I am, um, I feel... Yeah, I'll have to rewatch it because Mesara Mender, it's like I'm getting into the spirit. I actually am already in the spirit. Which means I don't even know how I got here or when it is that I got to this particular place. Sarah, let me follow the wind. Aremre so aro. I will rewatch this because I don't know what I've said. I don't even know which direction I was going. But the spirit of God needs to be inside of you. Whatever word it is I released prior to this, just understand that you need God's spirit. Because this place, this earth, this world is very, very much spiritual, it very much is dangerous and it's very much is against God. So if you don't have God's spirit in you, you're in trouble. Azera Mandradia, let me leave this video and I will start from here going forward because I don't know how I got here. I just need to know that I need to move forward because now there's a spirit coming over me Mezara Mesontra Eplor Kebrar Teredo I hope you understand